let's look at the quarterback battle, of course. Uh, Drew Pine, Tyler Buckner. I'm going to liken the use of those two quarterbacks in um, backing up Jack Cohn to what J.J. McCarthy experienced at Michigan. They didn't um, shy away from uh, giving them time against meaningful, especially Tyler Buckner, against uh, meaningful opponents, good opponents in some key situations. But, of course, uh, maybe the play calling was limited. Uh, your thoughts about the quarterback battle? It's, it's going to be interesting. I mean, you've got two very different players. We've been asked, do you think Notre Dame will play two quarterbacks? And I say the only way they play two quarterbacks is if Drew Pine wins the job because then you'll see Drew Tyler Buckner be used like he was last year because he's a very dynamic athlete. But, you know, everything that we've heard from sources is that right now they think the expectation is is that that Tyler Buckner is kind of the leader in the clubhouse right now because he's a very dynamic athlete. But the thing that we didn't get a chance to see much of last year is the fact that Tyler's a, a, a better passer than people realize. A lot of fans kind of look at Tyler and say, well, and he was used this way, that way, or the other way. And the reason Notre Dame played him the way they did last season is because they had a guy that could drop back and throw the ball. That was Jack Cohn. What they needed from Tyler was this is a dynamic guy that can run the ball. And, you know, we looking at it from Notre Dame standpoint, we don't have the ability to just go out there and run the ball. And, and run, the run blocking for most of the season last year was not good. But when you go look at the run game numbers when Tyler Buckner came in the game, they were much better because teams had to respect him as a runner, as you see down there, you know, 7.3 yards per carry and just was a, a threat. And you'll see Kyron Williams' numbers were better when he was in the game. Logan Diggs had some, 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 did some damage when he was in the game. And now it's about evolving as a passer. And that's the next step for Tyler Buckner. And I think some people forget that this is a kid that threw for over 4,400 yards and 58 touchdowns as a junior in high school. And so he's a kid that has the ability to be effective as a passer, but he's going to have to become a more consistent player. He's kind of altered his throwing motion. He's going to have to kind of still harness that and, and be consistent with that because when he he made some throws last year, as, you, as you've seen the stats below, he made 35 throws. And as we saw like in the Virginia Tech game, we saw the best of, of Tyler Buckner and the worst of Tyler Buckner, which is you know, he threw some beautiful balls in that game, a go route you know, early to, to Kevin Austin where he just dropped it on a dime, hit Avery Davis on a backside seam route. And then he throws the ball right into the chest of a cornerback, a squatted cornerback who picks it off and runs it back for a touchdown. Those are the things that Tyler's going to have to get better at, right? It's just his grasp of the defense, being able to go out there and, and process and throw on time and show anticipation and then be able to get the ball out accurately. Drew Pine, on the other hand, you know, doesn't have the athleticism that that Tyler Buckner brings to the table. He doesn't have the size. Maybe he doesn't have a big arm and all those type of things. But what Drew can do is run the offense. And we saw that when he came off the bench against Wisconsin last year when Jack Cohn got hurt. Wisconsin went down and scored, went up 13-10. Notre Dame returns the ensuing kickoff back for a touchdown. And, and, and Drew really just kind of took over from there, threw a touchdown pass to Kevin Austin and, and really helped put that game away. You know, came into the game against Cincinnati and they were down, I think it was like 17 to nothing at the time and, you know, led them to a couple scores and threw, threw a touchdown pass to Brayden Lindsay. So he's just that kind of kid, Mark, where you look at him and you're like, he's not real big, doesn't have a great arm. He's an okay athlete, but not a guy that's going to scare you. There's nothing about him that you really fall in love with except the fact he just, he just makes plays, you know, and I've called him these, he's the ultimate point guard quarterback that if you put town around him, you know, he can run the offense and, you know, he's not a Magic Johnson type of point guard. That's Tyler Buckner. He is more of a John Stockton type of point guard where he may not, at the end of the day, you're like, yeah, he did okay. And then you're like, oh, he went 22 of 30, you know, for 298 yards and three touchdowns and, you know, ran for 12 yards and moved the chains and, you know, just had a really effective day. And that's just, that's what Drew brings to the table. And I think his presence and what he does is a lot of what Tyler Buckner needs to do. And so I think that presence really challenges Tyler and they, they kind of push each other, but also do it in a healthy way where if you talk to any source I have, they're really close. Uh, they get along well, and they push each other in an encouraging way as opposed to the kind of quarterback battle that has separated the locker room at times at Notre Dame in the past, especially when you go back to the 2016 season. 